What's up, rockers? Welcome to another episode of the Talk Louder podcast, where we geek out on all things rock and roll. Hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Leave us your likes and comments. You can also leave likes and comments on our Facebook page. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Instagram at Talk Louder underscore podcast. We're also now on TikTok. And of course, you can find us at our website, TalkLouderPodcast.com, where you'll find links to all of our previous episodes and also links to merchandise. I'm Metal Dave Glessner, along with my co-host, Jason McMaster, who is a, a well-traveled gent of late. You know, I, I'm, I'm almost having a sense of deja vu, <laughs> as if we've done this episode already. <laughs> well, you're not, <clears throat> you're, not, uh, you're not kidding, because, <laughs> um, and I'll probably say this again, but I feel like we could take the accept episode that's i think was titled jason with except yeah and just change it to jason with armored saint <laughs> right and just every time i said armored just put new photos you know every time i said except just put in armored saint yeah do a copy paste take out the venues accept. were almost the same it was literally like right behind where except like they were going where i started with except yeah, and that's the that's the funny thing. When you mentioned to me that you got the call and you were going to fly out and do some gigs with Armored Saint, um, I noticed you were going right back to the Upper East Coast, and I'm thinking, what's going on up there with singers getting uh, ill up on the Upper East Coast? <laughs> like, first it was Mark Tornillo, and then it was uh, John Bush, yeah. and uh, you were flying back to the same part of the country to to step in. Yeah, that was something that didn't even. I didn't even, it didn't matter where they were because there was an issue at hand that needed attention. And, uh, and then I, I realized that I'm flying right back out to the Eastern seaboard. And when you brought that up, uh, I was kind of like taken aback, like, Whoa, he's right. <laughs> and, um, I'm wondering what's happening when they cross when they get past Tennessee or what? Right. Alabama shit. I'm just like, what's going on right here? Because they're like, it's, uh, it's like a, uh, it's like a, a Bermuda triangle for singers. It's like, uh Oh, they out of sight, you know, it's kind of, yeah. There's like something, something in the water up there. That's yeah. uh, having a negative effect on some of our favorite singers. Um, yeah. I don't like it. I don't want anybody to get sick, but we can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for people that are that are tuning in listening obviously we're talking about jason getting the call to go out in front um armored saint i almost said except and the the phone call comes just weeks after you return from fronting except so you're back in town for maybe three weeks or so and the call comes again and this time it's from armored saint so take us through the timeline when you got the call when you hopped the plane and when you were doing your first show with armored saint well, first off, I want to touch base on the wonderful time under terrible circumstances that I had with Accept. Um, there, these these two things are verbatim. It is the same part of the country. The same illness happened to John as it did to uh, Mark. I did the same amount of shows. Um, <clears throat> they almost happened around the same time of the week. So <clears throat> to put it in perspective, the accept thing I think happened um, October 18th and it was earlier in the day, right? That all yeah. that went down and people can watch that episode to, get all the skinny on it but <clears throat> and then 19 hours after i got the call you know the next the next morning i was like 7 a.m i was on a flight yeah something like that this time i got i was called on a sunday night i had just done a gig with igniter saturday night here in town in austin and uh that it's the next night i'm in my robe and i'm like you know this was so the accept thing was uh, I was on a plane on October 19th. I played 20, 21, 22, 23, and was home on the uh, home October 24th. 
So the day that I'm getting uh, called by Armored Saint is a Sunday, and I believe it to be November 18th, I believe. So if I'm home the 24th, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, Halloween, 31st, November 1, 2, 3, 4. So three weeks, I think you're right. Yeah. I had to think about that literally, duh, duh, you know, with my hands <laughs> just to make sure. Cause I want people to know that I'm sitting at home on a Sunday night in my robe with my dog in my lap going, you know, me and me and my wife, Kate are watching TV and it's just like, Oh man, it's been a very strange. This, this has been weird phone nine one one emergency. <laughs> I'm like, what? What the, what's going on? And it's believe it or not, it's Scott Dell Hoover. Yeah. Dangerous toys. Right. And he, and he, I said, I'm not answering your call. Text me. Can't be <laughs> that crazy. Right. <laughs> and he said, I mean, unless it would have been right. Yeah. And then he, uh, he said, you, you need to call, you need to call me right now. And I was like, Oh no. And I'm like, what, what's up? I call him. Of course. What's up? He goes, you need to call Philip Sandoval from Armored Saint. This is out of the blue that, you know, I love, I love Armored Saint, but I'm not reciting the guys in the band's names or their songs in my sleep every day. Right. It's right. Out of the blue. I know they're on tour, successful tour, supporting Wasp. It's going kick ass. Cause you had just thing. seen him in San Antonio. I just saw him a week prior, literally right. seven, eight days prior to this phone call. You're hanging out with John Bush in San Antonio just All a night. Week John Bush sounded amazing. It was great. They were right. awesome. I saw Michael Shanker. It was one of the few shows that Michael Shanker jumped on and right. was doing a set in between Saint and Wasp. Right. So, so that was great. Oh, you know, things couldn't be better. You know, Scotty calls Nick. Fast forward a little bit. Next thing you know, I'm on the I call Phil. I'm like, what the what's going on? And he goes, I think you better talk to Joey. Hands the phone to Joey Vera. And I'm going, dude. And he goes, dude. And I went, dude. <laughs> and he went, dude. You know, it's bad when someone goes, dude. And I went, <laughs> I, I couldn't do dude anymore. I was like, you're fucking kidding me. Right. I knew what he was calling me for. Yeah. So it was so like heavy sigh. It was just heavy sigh on his end. And I'm like, I just saw Bush. I just saw you. what, 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 what? Yeah. Yeah. They said, he's saying, listen to this. This sounds familiar. This is creepy. He said, he just pushed through like three shows with this affliction. I'm like, stop the tape. That's exactly what Mark did. He thought he right. would just power through till he got a day off and figured it out. <clears throat> couldn't happen. Yeah. So <clears throat> this was at 10 PM. So I'm up till like three o'clock in the morning building me one of those. You've seen it in the accept. you know, I take out the accept material and I put in the armored saint material. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> I, I used a different uh, binder because <laughs> the accept one got fucked up because someone tried to steal it. <laughs> it was been all I had taped to, to the floor, you know, thank you. Good night. And I run to the dressing room and one of the texts is like, well, it's kind of, it's kind of mangled. Somebody, somebody tried to tear it off the stage and run away with it. And I had to give them a boot and I'm like, wow, well, you know, I need this. I got one more show, you know, anyway. So I'm studying again, but this time right. it's armored saint material, uh, right. Completely crazy. Uh, me and Vera back and forth on the phone for hours on end. He's booking me a flight. I'm printing lyrics to songs, to Armored Saint songs I don't know that are fairly new. Wind Hands Down. Um, I was, you know, had to brush up on Symbol of Salvation. Mm-hmm. Their uh, uh, Rain of Fire, I had to had to brush up on that. March of the Sand and Madhouse and Can You Deliver, I probably didn't need it, 
but I needed a safety net because I want to do a good job. Right. So I bring my tools, right? right. I'm not just going to show up with a screwdriver. I brought the chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Weirdest, the weirdest two things that have ever happened to me in my entire career happened in the last six weeks. Yeah. I mean that, yeah, I remember you texted me the night you got the call and I, I saw the text the next morning because I was already in bed and it looked like you texted me around 11 o'clock on Sunday night. And uh, your text just said you up. And I wasn't. That's, that's, obviously. A, that's an hour after I knew what was about to go down. And, right. and that's all I knew. I didn't have a plane flight yet. I didn't know where I was going. The set list. I had, I didn't have a set list yet. Yeah. And so I obviously missed that text. And the next morning I texted you back and I said, I was asleep. What's going on? And you said something like, I'm leaving. I'm flying out at 4 p.m. today. John is sick, going out to do Armored Saint. And I was like, wow, that, that's even faster than the accept thing, I think. I'm not sure, but it, it, it was, was very Yeah, it was, a, it was about the same time, maybe, maybe let's see 10 p.m. on a Sunday I my, my plane is backing off the dock at like 4 p.m. I don't know how many hours that is but yeah it's close to the same amount of like hurry the hell up and get your ass out here I had one I had that day to travel I was on stage the next day yeah uh, so same, but same thing. Besides all the preparation you need to do uh, to, to handle the gig, you know, you mentioned in the accept episode, that you've got a whole personal life that you have to pack up. So how do you clear this with your boss and your wife? And from a personal standpoint, well, it was around the time that I was sending, oh, shit, uh, <laughs> text messages to you. I mean, the first thing is I talked to Kate. I'm like, I, I you know, because I don't want to like, do the freak out and the dude, 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 dude in front of Kate. So I come in the office, right? Cause I'm going to freak out. Right. And one, because I'm talking to someone who I completely adore as an artist. Yeah. And they're, they're wanting me to come out and be on stage with them. So my, my fanboy, I have to unlock that and put it in a, in the safe and lock it down like Jekyll and Hyde kind of shit. Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm talking business I, I get off the phone, I go in there and the, I, I talk to the management, you know, I talk to Kate and I say, you're never going to believe it. She goes, no, I can tell what's going on. <laughs> and, and I, she heard it. She heard this a month ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, she knows, she knows what's going on just by the tone of my voice and the words that I'm saying, I just said three weeks prior, a month prior, right? <laughs> like you said. So, uh, it's kind of one of those things. Yeah. It sounds like you need to do this. And, um, you know, the text messages to my boss were the same, uh, you know, hate to text so late. <laughs> You're never going to believe this crap. And they come right back to me and they say, same band. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like so you're, I'm you're not the only me. one having, I'm not the only one having deja vu no, here. No, they're going, your boss, they're, your wife, going everybody. Is this, is this the same band? And I'm like, no, totally different band. And, and like WTF exclamation yeah. point, you know? <laughs> and, um, l luckily I, you know, I have the, my day job that I have quote is, uh, you know, they want me to do this kind of stuff. Right. You know, there's, there's, it's not just me that's doing stuff, you know, hopping a plane or getting in a van or a bus or what, you know, um, you know, Ian McDougal is a busy mofo too, you know, so he's periodic as well, but he's kind of, it's a full-time job at school of rock, it, it, but it's, it's still considered part-time technically. Cause they don't let you get 40 hours. Yeah. Trust me. I don't want 40 hours up there. So <laughs> <laughs> um, if I, if they, if they gave me the keys to the castle and gave me a salary, I would not be able to do this kind of stuff. Right. Understand. Right. So yeah, that mm -hmm. makes it easier on my side as uh, I'm not calling it for the first time in my life. It's, it's not a disposable job. Right. You know, right. I mean, even though it's not full time, it's not a disposable job. It's a, 
uh, it's a uh, it can be somewhat of a life changing experience because I'm giving some back and it's highly rewarding when the kids do their damn homework, you know? Yeah. So yeah. anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Kate's cool. Bosses are cool. It's everything's kind of going to plan. And, and I get, I'm flying into, um, you might even remember more than me. It's all a flash now. Uh, uh Baltimore. 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 Yeah. Baltimore. Yeah. And, and I was like, I started, you know, I hadn't even thought it wasn't the first thing I thought of. It's like, okay, well, you know, they're going to pay for an Uber. This time, my name's not going to be Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that from Accept? Yeah, the tour manager's yeah. name was Ryan. He bought me the Uber. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking in the back of my head, it's like, it might have been, you know, Monday, Monday morning that I texted, uh, or that afternoon on my way to the airport, or when I got to the airport, I'm like, what are you doing at about, you know, nine tonight? you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, uh, to, uh, I'm sorry, Jean, uh, Barnett from dirty looks. Ah, uh, okay. Jean Barnett from dirty looks lives in Baltimore. Ah, uh, okay. You with me now? So yeah. I had, I had to like regurgitate that in my head just now, I guess you could tell. And, and that day I'm like, wait a minute. I was just here with dirty looks not really that long ago month few months ago right right and uh, i've been in that baltimore airport quite a few times uh, within last year and this year probably tw two or three times this year already yeah and uh he lives right by the airport in baltimore so i'm like can you can you come get me he's like what <laughs> Like, he do was, we have a gig? <laughs> he was excited about me doing the accept thing. And it was, we were in Pennsylvania, which is right there. You know, Maryland, yeah. Pennsylvania is right there. But it was still kind of kind of a trek for him to get to Jim Thorpe, uh, Penn's Peak, where that was October 20th, where I had done the first accept date. And I said, well, I'm not playing in Pennsylvania. I'm playing in your town. And I, he knew the venue it was called Ram's head live. And, um, I'm, I'm glad I'm grateful that fans taped it and was like, here's the train wreck of some dude from Texas fronting armored Saint for Bush. Well, he's, you know, <laughs> that's what I, that's my version of it anyway. And fortunate and, and unfortunate because I did it was my first show. I was nervous as hell. I didn't know the material as well, of course, as that, that I did on Friday in New yeah. York. It was way better. My I was stronger. I, just me personally, I thought that I was like, as John Bush was saying, you're crushing it. You're crushing it. And I was yeah. crushing it Friday uh, with his help. He came out, John Bush came out and did the last two songs with us. But the point, I'm in Baltimore and Gene Barnett from Dirty Looks comes and picks me up and it's like, oh man, isn't this weird? And we're just laughing and smiling the whole time in the car. And it's, it was only my, the hotel that I was staying at. Uh, it was a red lion downtown, uh, Baltimore. And, uh, it was super cool. It had been totally redone. And I was telling Kate all about it. They, it was cool. Hardwood floors, like real hardwood floors and all this cool, it was like a boutique. It was a red lion, but they didn't, they called it an RL. Yeah. And because they could do that, they didn't want to be a red lion. Isn't that like a La Quinta, you know? Yeah. This, it had been redone, new management owners, blah, 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 blah. And I heard that this hotel, too much information, but I had heard from the receptionist that this, that said hotel in a month from now, it's going to be apartments. Ah. Like so high dollar apartments. Like condos. Huh. So you yeah, got to lucky. There's this like, there's this like, uh, you know, Richie Bitchy theater, like highbrow, like theater across the street. Like if you look out the window of my room, I'm looking into the theater windows. Like it's really cool. All brownstone. They're all, you know, at least 10 stories. Really cool part. Restaurants everywhere. Amazing. Right on. 
What do, what do you pack? How do you pack for these things? I meant to ask you this during uh, okay. the Accept show because wow, the Accept, that's, a, that's a really good question because what do you take? What do you wear? Do you have any issues getting those studded wristbands and belts through the airport? Because I know on stage you wear your armor and your battle jacket and there's metal all over this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Except I was I I brought um, a leather vest uh, with you know some metal on it and battle vest i'll just call it but it's leather and it's kind of heavy and a bit daunting and and then these old school pyramid cuffs that i wear pretty much all the time now for any gig because they're kind of classic you know yeah and they're comfortable they don't bother me they're loose on my wrist i don't even know they're there so and that's about it and then my my matching pyramid belt with my undertaker buckle which is a a go-to all the time as well. So that's just normal wear. I'm basically, other than the battle vest with Armored Saint, uh, I'm not bringing the battle vest, the leather. I'm just wearing, like, the first three nights, I just, I look like I was, I wear what I w- go to work. Yeah. <laughs> other than the cuffs, you know, uh, it's just what I wear when I go to work. These glasses, wearing all black. Yeah. Big, big so, dumb heavy metal band t shirt underneath. No, no issues with the pyramid studs going through the airport. No, but it's a great question because I, I get I get called. I get pulled aside. They flag me every time. Do you know what it is they're flagging me for? I'm gonna guess the pyramid studs. No. Nope. Ain't wrong. Get you what wanna guess it? again? Uh I have no idea. I don't think you're packing heat. Okay, it's something I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. No, I'm packing light. I check no <laughs> bags. When I do uh, yeah. the last two gigs, I check no bags. I'm bringing some shit, but and I'm uh, getting flagged. I'm getting pulled over by TSA. They have to go through all my shit. I have but no what idea. Is, what uh, is microphone? It? Nope. Um no. I was using Mark's shit and I was using Bush's stuff. The only thing I brought that was different with armored saint as I brought, uh, Jared, let me borrow his, his, I have some in ears and I've got some in ears on order, but he let me borrow these, these, uh, in ear, basically headphones, but you see, you know, pro singers using monitor in ear monitors. Yeah. So I brought those and I just use Bush's, uh, monitor ear pack, the wireless pack. Right. And I used his microphones and just like in, uh, with except I used Mark's microphones and I just used like regular stage wedges with except. But okay. So they're not flagging you for gear or the pyramid studs. What well, is wh- why, why wouldn't you think that it's, that it's not part of my gear? Let me give you a hint. What I call part of my gear is that fucking notebook. Uh, <laughs> so what goes with that notebook that they could be flagging and you'll have the answer. I have no idea. Metal rings in the binder. How do I see that shit? How do I see that song ends? Black stage. I need to know what the hell's going on. I need to see what's now. I need to see. You got a flashlight of some sort. It's not a flashlight. It's a motherfucking halogen, baby. Oh, okay. So there I've got to imagine if you will, this is total Jason Stoner garage. Welcome to Jason Stoner garage where we build shit for the stage. (laughs) <laughs> hey, we're building a, I can't see shit. Uh, I can't see my lyrics. Don't you think you ought to memorize those fucking things by now? So anyway, <laughs> we've got like a one by uh, two piece of wood and it's painted black. Of course, it's got reflective tape on it. Of course, it's got glow in the dark shit on it. Of course, because it's going on the stage for blackouts. It's got two massive heavy duty clips, like roach clip kind of things that you see people hanging up pipe and drape. You know what I mean? Or you yeah. can see people hanging up banners with. It's got two of those bolted in t- on either side of this handlebar is a good, good, just it's, it's a stick, right? Okay. 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 Now those clamps clamp onto the notebook on either side, on either, like you open the notebook, clamp, clamp, duct tape that whole thing to the stage and it ain't going nowhere. And I can flip the pages with my foot. Because yeah. they're in plastic sheet protectors. So right. in the middle of this stick with a gooseneck sticking up like this, there's this big, fat, bright as fuck halogen work light. 
<laughs> and it's got a it's got a cable. It's plugged it plugged into an extension cable, and that goes another ten feet. If I wouldn't have brought the extension cable, I would have been fucked on that. Wa- it's wasp stage setup, right? The first night was a little bit smaller and tighter of a venue of a stage, you know, the setup was a little tight. Like I was on the side. I don't know if you saw that footage. I had to stand on the side. Uh, Like, like it was like stage left. It was Phil Sandoval, Joey Vera, uh, and then Gonzo in the middle. And he's pushed all the way up to the front of the stage. And then, and then me and then Jeff Duncan. Right. that That was, that was Baltimore. So, uh, you know, I was like, had to, I was basically had my shit set up, my, my teleprompter, if you will, set up under the drum riser, like (laughs) tucked away under there, dark as fuck under there. So see what I mean? Yeah. But I didn't have to use the extension cord. It was just like, you know, the plug, the closest plug was like three feet away. That's how tight it was. The next night it's like, I'm this shy from the plug. I can't get the plug closer. You know, it's, it's not my stage. I can't rearrange anything, you know? Right extension cord the third night it's bigger the stages got bigger and bigger and bigger as we went so i said hey you guys got an extension cord so i had to actually extend it so by the third night the 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 plug and i'm grateful because you know the bigger stages are more fun and you get more you get more room it's simple right better sound more people a lot of them you know two out of four were sold out i believe so you get the idea uh that's what i'm getting flagged for at the airport Great question, Dave. <laughs> wow. I would have never guessed a halogen light. So um, so what adjustments are made to the set list to accommodate you coming in at the last minute? Are they are they dropping songs, adding songs, shuffling it around? Uh, are some songs more challenging for you personally than others? I'm going to guess yes on, on some of the newer material, but kind of tell us uh, what adjustments are required to, to accommodate you flying in. Okay, so this answer is going to be kind of all over the place, but not not necessarily on purpose, just to you know be problematic. Um, <laughs> let me let me just Please say be that problematic. John Bush is hard to sing. Oh yeah, because he's kind of like he's not he's a crooner. He's not a yeller, but he's very loud. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. that's what i mean by a crooner he's like he's he's a very bluesy singer he's super bluesy and gritty right yeah uh people don't think about john bush as this bluesy rock singer because and people even throw armored saint into like oh metal 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 is armored saint really that metal you know like uh, you know, there's plenty of bands that are more, that are fucking metal compared to Armored Saint. Yeah. Armored Saint is like, they write songs like with moderate tempos and that are kind of funky and jazzy sometimes. More like an, an old Ozzy Osbourne song. Like yeah. Bark at the Moon, like Armored Saint, that could be an Armored Saint style. Yeah. And you... And I even got like Miracle that. Man and even it's all over the place. You know, I'm just using Ozzy as an, you know, is Ozzy that metal? You know, it's. Yeah. Well, the definition has saying? changed over bluesy. the years. Maybe. It's bluesy rock. Yeah. It's just the way their, their riffs are kind of jagged. And it's just uh, loud. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you could, I guess we could, it always goes back to Motorhead. Yeah. Motorhead is a rock and roll band. It's a bluesy rock and roll band but when you think about lemmy's voice god damn that guy's gargling razor blades which makes it metal or hardcore yeah. or punk you know he's like pushing it's crazy the stuff right. that he, he's making your lawn die you know he's yeah. alive and well and pushing up daisies right in front of you at the same time so there's some cool shit happening in armored saint music when you think about what john bush is contributing to it it's super powerful and maybe lending itself to metal because of what he's doing with his voice but technically singing style is very bluesy and groovy um hard to sing only because if i were to try to match that tone with my voice really hard to do up to when it get you get to a certain point uh in my range that i have 
um, the first night was very difficult because I was trying to do that. We sound checked and it went okay. We only had enough time for like three or four songs in the sound check. Unlike except where except was the headliner, the sets were 90 minutes. The sound check, the first, the only sound check we ever did was a 90 minute sound check. So that's was technically the rehearsal was the, Good you know, point, rehearsal yeah. and then do it in front of people right a couple hours later. Yeah. So this was, a common sound check and we did the songs that well we did the same songs for sound check pretty much every day because they were songs that i was least familiar with and those i've already uh, uh win hands down mm -hmm. was one that joey actually threw a curveball to me by the when i was parking the car at the airport Hey man, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. We're augmenting the set just one more time. We're going to do win hands down. Well, I didn't hit print on win hands down. I've already <laughs> left the house. I'm at the fucking airport. <laughs> so in my layover, I've got, you know, a piece of flyer or something in that notebook. And I just turned it over and started listening and started writing down all the words to win hands down and Sharpie. You saw it and you even commented, you said, man, that Sharpie's getting a workout today. Yeah. yeah. I knew that handwriting and I could tell, I was like, what's he doing? Because uh, I, it's not like you'd ever handwrite the lyrics. You would just print them off a computer, but that was obviously an audible last minute. Sort very, of deal. very important thing here is yes. You just look them up and print them on the computer, yes, but change the font size <laughs> yeah, for so blind you, people. Right. So, yeah, um, here you go. Uh, so I'm putting wind hands down. I've, I've got I put everything in order. I start listening to it because I'm just being honest. I'm a uh, shame on me being the Armored Saint fan that I claim to be and not being as familiar with that song or with that record. Uh, that's all on me. I'll take the heat. Um, yeah. So sound checks were win hands down, uh, uh, symbol and, um, symbol of salvation and rain, rain and fire, rain of fire. Right. Um, only because the rest of the set was long before I die, uh, March of the same madhouse, not in any order, of course, can you deliver, uh, I sent it to you. What else was on there? Oh man. I don't remember. I can oh, go get it. Let me get it. So it's all good. You're, you're going to laugh at this. I grabbed the accept one. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Right. Of course I did. <laughs> I, I told you earlier in this, uh, that, that I ended up using a different binder cause the other one got right mangled. Yeah. Mangled and trampled. <laughs> uh, shit. I grabbed the wrong one again. Hold on. So sorry. <laughs> so to be clear, when I saw them in San Antonio recently, you know, they, d they were doing, uh, punch in the sky. Mm hmm uh what standing on the shoulders of giants right you know they were doing yeah. those they were doing these elongated intros and outros and such uh so we opened with rain of fire then one of my faves we did uh nervous man mm. love 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 the delirious nomad record especially nervous man's kind of the title track because they say delirious nomad in it a bunch it's the third song long before i die same album or no is that on raising fear might be on raising fear doesn't matter we're not judging how big of a fan we are here today <laughs> long before i die then chemical euphoria uh -huh. i'm gonna say that's on raising fear yeah uh symbol of salvation these are these are so great these fucking songs are so great yeah and that's just bam 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 so good and it's like three or four in a row before i start really talking to the crowd you know right uh then win hands down uh <clears throat> march of the saint it wasn't originally March of the Saint. Now it was Can You Deliver, then March of the Saint. But we switched it the last night for John. 
because he should be coming out doing that beginning for Can You Deliver, right? Yeah. And that's what he did. So March of the Saint, uh, it would have been Can You Deliver, March of the Saint, and then Madhouse, but the last night was March, Can You Deliver, and Madhouse. Originally, no one knows this, but originally when me and Joey first talked, that song Aftermath was going to be in the set which is kind of a ballad and then it's got this huge, it's got this epic intro intro that I absolutely love. And I was excited about seeing that because, because it's different and it was going to be like mid set, but it got taken out and when hands down was put in instead. Um, as far as how difficult, as far as how difficult these were, I'll go through them play by play. Rain of Fire, there's little places in it where he's high in his chest voice. That's difficult for me because he has a higher mid-range register than I do. I always switch. And if people watch the Todd LaTorre episode as well as the John Bush episode, we talk about that a lot. And you're kind yeah. of the, the fly on the wall going, wow, that's just crazy. Interesting. What, you know, I, I think, I think I even understand it, you know? And so you kind of got schooled that day a little bit on, on where oh, how your range can work uh, yeah. for you. But if you try to switch it to someone else's, it can be detrimental and you, your voice cracks, you lose power. Other things can happen. Yeah. So there's only a few places in Rain and Fire that I had to, I had to chill out on and you and be me. I had to do me. I had, yeah. Jason had to be Jason in a couple of places, but I didn't. I wanted to uh, just grab the bull by the horns and and that first night I just really I struggled the first night. Everyone yeah. was so happy and I was like, man, that's great that you love it, but I'm not supposed to say this, but I have a recording of that of that first night. Yeah. Not happy. Never, never to be played for anyone <laughs> because of me. Right. Yeah. Like I'm fucking up the band. Just, you know, I'm, I'm being okay. It's no one knows that because it's live and you know, but right. As far as my opinion goes. Yeah. It's not, oh, you're, you're going to be your own worst critic. That's yeah. right. That's exactly right. Thank you for saying that. So, uh, Nervous man, same thing. There's some places that I need to like switch to a mixed voice or like a lower head voice kind of a thing. Uh, and it worked out a lot better for me the last three nights. Long before I die. Same kind of thing. Uh, symbol of salvation same kind of thing that one's even harder for me in some places and easier for me in other places in this within the same song wow so if yeah. i if i just stuck with my way and still did the bush isms you know like did the his inflections because in my opinion those are part of the song like if you cover priest or iron maiden or whatever if you don't do the inflections the way Paul Diano did or Bruce Dickinson does on the studio stuff, because I would never sing a Paul Diano Iron Maiden song in the style of Bruce Dickinson. Right. I just wouldn't do that. Right. 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 So yeah. it makes sense. I'm not just going to go be me on John Bush. I'm going to be me trying to do John respecting Bush, respecting the song. And because, yeah. you know, if you're, singing something whether it's just a yeah or a ow ah, right or whatever just an inflection or the, that's part of the riff that's part of the song especially yeah. if there's harmonies on those little inflections in armored saint there's always a harmony on those inflections uh wind hands down it's a lower register kind of easy for me and it builds up into this chorus which is in this sort of sweet spot in my higher range where I can make it through, but there's a few notes throughout the chorus. I have to switch to that, that other voice. Mm -hmm. Very interesting because the first night struggled because I was trying to, I want to do, I want to be John Bush and I'm not John Bush. Yeah. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have tried to be John Bush the first night. <laughs> it's tough to be John Bush. It's hard. 
It's hard, man. <laughs> uh, my hat's off. I, I give everything to him. The dude is so one good. of the greatest, man. I mean, uh, unbelievable. Is, this... He's like a football coach. Like that's how loud he is in the mic. Yeah, I was getting to vocal. I'll get to this March of the Saint. Uh, same kind of thing. I have to check myself. You know, I have to be me in the places that I can't. Uh, can you deliver? Uh, yeah. It ends up, all the songs end up being where I have to just be careful about, you know, how John Bush, do I want to be in this one part that I know I'm going to struggle? Yeah. Um, it's just easier for me to do it kind of my way. And I feel like the audience doesn't realize the turmoil in my mind as I'm doing these songs. Of course not. Right. They right. don't know, you know, they, they're not even, they're, they're probably only thing they have to compare me to is John Bush. That's not John Bush. Right, you, know, you know what right. I mean? So they're seeing that and hearing, wow, this guy's getting through the songs. Okay. If I got that review, I'm happy. Yeah. 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 Take it and run. Yeah. I mean, we've said it on this podcast numerous times. John is just one of the most amazing and often underrated vocalists in the whole genre of hard rock, heavy metal. Yeah. Uh, just a powerhouse of a voice. Uh, so for you to step in, that that's uh, that's no easy task. And, well, I was. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was. This is kind of cool and exciting. Is really for the first time, other than uh, you know, hey Jason, get up here and sing uh, Madhouse with me, which has happened in Texas. Yeah, five times seven times i've seen you do march of the saint and yeah march of the saint live. a couple of times madhouse a bunch of times and then one time with anthrax i did lonely i'm sorry only with him oh, yeah yeah and uh and that was super fun and i, I think i fucked up only a little bit <laughs> well you probably called <laughs> Just, it lonely <laughs> whatever well yeah i fucked up the title because i I'm kinda like i hate myself a little bit too <laughs> but but the point is is other than just like on the fly kind of thing just wanted to say how incredibly like humbling this is because it's, it's very fucking cool. But I, when I think about it and I'm like, I get all fanboy like, you know, yeah. cause I was vocalizing John, uh, people may have found out by now, maybe they didn't, but uh, maybe they don't know that Bush was on, on the road with us. Like when I flew into Baltimore, he was staying at the same hotel. The band was on the bus somewhere else. They were right. on the bus and they had a day room for showers and whatever. And John was by himself at this, had a room at this red lion in Baltimore and they got me a room at the same hotel and we Ubered over the next day. So, you know, he brought me breakfast and I got to see him and he looked fine. And he just, I wasn't, didn't want to have a conversation with him because his doctors were saying, you don't need to just not talk and just chill and right. take these pills and, you know, so he was dealing with a lot, trying to just not, he wants to talk, you know, John, he's talking, yeah. to him. he wants to hang out, you know? Sure. Sure. So uh, we, it was more texting than anything else. So he, you know, we, the next day we're at the venue, we get on the bus. Uh, I guess that's a good, a good time. I can go ahead and mention that before we started kicked into rain of fire, he was announcing the band. He was the first one on the stage. Mm -hmm. Like they would give me the mic and I would just give it to John. So, because John's going out on first, you know, he's on first base immediately. Right. Hey, I'm John Bush singer for armored St. Crowd goes crazy. Right. Yeah. And he's talking about the elephant in the room, just like, uh, just like Mark did with except after he did his, few songs and I'm going to bring our buddy out here. Da, da, da. Same idea, but they did it first because John was uh, casually resting his voice and on the mend. That was just exciting for me seeing him sort of pass a, the, his whole world to me here, put my shoes on. Yeah. Right. It was just weird. So you see pictures of me uh, standing there, shit eating grin Next to John, I just want to hug on him and like kiss his bald head. And like, you know, I'm just like, I'm, I can't believe, and you know, sold out crowd. He's out here going, yeah, <clears throat> I'm kind of under the weather. So this, this dude right here is going to kill it for you. Those are his words, not mine. Yeah. And I'm going to rest, but I'm going to be right over there 
watching the show. Yeah. Every night. That's the way uh, they, it, that's that's called a class act. Yeah. And it, does that add any intimidation to you're already <laughs> you're already oh, panic stricken self that's, knowing that that's John a really that's a really good question. But I feel like it goes away once we get that first song going. But when he's out there like saying that shit and I'm standing right next to him, go, oh, my <laughs> God, what the fuck? You know, I, I feel like they're waiting. Their their guns are loaded. And when he walks off the stage, I'm the target. You dead meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen. It, it didn't happen. I think I saw one hater who was like given a thumbs down and it was in that, <laughs> that smallish room in, uh, it was Ram's head. It was Baltimore. So I, you- I mentioned it and I, and, and I come to think of it, he might've been just a hardcore wasp fan. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> who cares? You know, at this point I'm like, I didn't die, you know? Right. Um, it's okay. No, I, I think once again, much like the accept thing, you know, of course, I'm following you on social media and I'm following the YouTube videos. And again, just like the accept thing, you uh, by and large got nothing but rave reviews and positive response. And uh, I, I just think that's amazing, especially uh, since people have a tendency to just want to tear you down or compare you and you know, this and that or whatever, but you, you, across the board, it seemed that you, you were getting, you were getting good compliments. I have a the theory the that movie. if they were at the show, they had a good time no matter what. Yeah. They didn't have anything bad to say, you know, at least they would go, yeah, the show was great. They don't elaborate. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Tell us about, uh, I'm, hold that thought, please. Because it was something that I was really excited to, to talk about on that long rant that we sort of like jump back and forth on tandem was that since John was there all day, every day, yeah, uh, he would be warming up and I got to, the band gets to hear him sing and warm up all the time in the shower, in the dressing room, in the bus, whatever. He gets up at like seven 30 in the morning and does this warm up. Even when he's under the weather, he'll get up and like get all the cobwebs out. Right. Which right. is super smart. And, um, cause I don't do that. And, uh, you know, so it's like I get up an hour, hour or two later. I'm like, I, I start asking him, oh, wow, how's your warm up? And he's like, man, much better than yesterday. And it was like all of this positive stuff, right? Yeah. So during this, not every day, but like three out of four of the days that I was, you know, on the road with Armored Saint, uh, I get to vocalize with one of my favorite singers. I, I get to literally like sing and warm up and talk about techniques with John Bush. Yeah. And what, how it feels and how I'm like, God damn, you're loud. What the fuck? Can you do that same note at a lower volume? And he's like, how the hell am I going to do that? You know? So there was all these techniques were kind of trading secrets, you know? Uh, And it's very, very weird because you know, you could see John Bush, you know, when he, when there's just like flames coming out of his voice, because if you see pictures or live footage, he'll pull the mic away. Yeah. You pull that mic away, you know, that you, you lose, you lose tone from the, here's the mic right on my face. And here it is right here. And I, you know, I have to like push louder, the further the mic gets away. That makes sense. Microphone proximity. Right. So when you hear him loud as hell and you see him, he's got the mic a foot away from his face. Think about how loud he must be. And he knows how loud he has to be. But see, his motor, I'll just call it, knows already from singing for 45 or 50 years. He knows that his voice better than better than we do. Just like, right. So it is what it is. I'm asking him like, whoa, that's crazy. Can, Can you can you can you lighten up your your gas pedal on that and have the same tone, the same grit, the same effect, but at a lower volume, don't you think you would save like some like lung air? You know, you wouldn't like be wearing yourself out. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's the only way I know how to do anything anymore because the older I get, I feel like the lighter uh, approach I have but I get to keep the same notes that I sang when I was 20 and with the same tone and same grit. Right. 
And yeah. it's more comfortable to sing it that way because I'm not just like throwing all my bullets into one gun, you know? Right, right. So um, was, that was really fun for me and eye-opening for both of us to learn each other's technique. And even the band was commenting, like when I'm doing warm-ups or something before we went out there, they're like, God damn, that's so loud. And, you know, they're saying the same shit I was saying to John. They're saying it to me. But that note, that like head voice, like, you know, you know, cat scratch kind of, you know, nails on the chalkboard, you know, evil witch scream that you can do. Yeah. Uh, that's super loud. And it's not in a chest voice. I'm like, no, it's I'm using my diaphragm. I'm using my motor down here to push. But it's not a chest voice. It's like a little bit of mixed voice, but it's a lot of a lot of head power. And yeah. like, that's the loudest I've ever heard anyone sing that that top note shit. <laughs> so whether they're complimenting me or going, dude, you need to fix that shit. You know, it sounds like what I was doing with Bush. So it's just these interesting. Uh, that's you know, really cool. You, things you don't know, things you don't even think about. Uh, when you work with uh, other professional musicians and singers who, who are, you know, when you're just comparing notes and, and styles and techniques, there's not one way to sing rock music. As a matter of fact, if there was, it would suck. It would be super boring. <laughs> There'd be no character. Have in the the same singer on everything. It's like, that's bullshit. It doesn't right. work. Yeah. That's brown yeah, that's, paper uh, back. And that's not what rock and roll is supposed to be. So. That's that's uh that's great insight there. Getting to learn from the master and trade some techniques and you know and just sort of get a glimpse and pick his brain. I guess is 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 or the just way find out what he needs in order to get to hit those. that verse or that song yeah. or those notes or whatever it is that he might be struggling with because of his condition. That's, right. That's was really the whole reason for the conversation and the little you know, five minutes of talking about technique with him. It was, I, I'll cherish it forever because it was like, whoa. And I told Bush about the one time for like five minutes that I got to vocalize with Philip Anselmo. This was at a down show. And he was like, uh, he, he, he sent somebody, I think it was Bobby. It was when Bobby was teching for Kirk for down. Bobby came and got me, goes, Hey, Phil wants to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he pulls me uh, back in the pipe and drape, and you know, impromptu dressing room. I think it was at Sunset Station, actually. Mm. And uh, yeah. And he's like, hey, man, what's up? And I'm like, hey. And he goes, do you have a falsetto? And I'm like, man, I wouldn't be able to sing much if I didn't have a falsetto, you know, <laughs> because I use that a lot. And I, that's because I'm not a tenor. I, you know, I lose my chest voice to a certain point and then I have to come up with this crazy, weird Mickey mouse voice or something. And he's like, Oh wow. And he's listening to David Bowie and you know, David Bowie has like 10 different fucking voices. If, if you're a David Bowie fan, you know that he can, he's got this dog vampire thing that he does in there. You know, he does this thing. It's crazy. Yeah. Me and Philip Anselmo, <laughs> picture this, uh, me and Philip uh, in a pipe and drape dressing room, tr singing along, harmonizing with David Bowie for a couple of minutes. And it was just surreal. So that's kind of what it was like with Bush, but I, it was a more of a comfortable scene with Bush because there was a reason why I was there. Philip and I were just kind of talking about singing, right? Okay. Me and John yeah. were like, how can we get you on stage tonight? You know, I want you not sick anymore. I'm in your shoes. I want you to be singing for Armored Saint. I must have said a hundred times out there to where I was probably driving them, get, making them upset a little bit. Hey, don't say that anymore. I was saying shit like, dude, when I come to see Armored Saint and there's some Texan up there singing for Armored Saint, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> Well, I want John Bush. I want John Bush is in Armored Saint, not this dude. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, people, I'm a little bit still concerned about how this is coming off to your longtime fans, just so you know. And they were like, dude, you need to stop worrying about, you know, they were constantly throwing love and appreciation. And I mean, constantly. Right. All week, you're saving our ass. It was very similar to the accept thing. They were so happy that I was there. 
Yeah. Um, tell me, uh, because I was watching the footage and is it safe to say that you were a little more at ease with Armored Saint than, than maybe with Accept? And I say this because I can see you uh, with Armored Saint interacting more with the crowd and not being so reliant on your, on your, 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 your binder. And, and I know you're bros with the guys. You guys have a long history together. You're friends, uh, first and foremost, friends, fans of each other, a lot of mutual respect there. I just got the sense that um, things might have been a little more loose and casual for you personally with Armored Saint than Accept. Not taking anything away from Accept, but Accept would maybe be uh, a, a bit of a harder study for you, maybe. Well, they were doing... With except it was a headlining slot, so it's twice the material. Mm. You True. know, it's like seventeen yeah. or eighteen songs or something like that. Yeah, and it was it was ninety minutes or whatever, and and then this was like fifty, forty five, fifty minutes. Right. So you're saying nine or ten songs against you know, it was just twice the work with except. Yeah, there was more material. Uh, and I'm not complaining, but there was more material, newer, newer material. Yeah. That was more, that was expected of me. Um, in hindsight, you know, Mark Tornillo, I was ready for him to take over the second accept show that I was there because he was there. He was on the bus with us. He was at the venues with us. He was there. Um, but I think the idea that they came up with where it was a tag team thing, he would come out and yay, I'm back. And you know, I'm still not hundred percent. Here comes Jason for a couple, blah, 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 that thing. That is smart. And they used me to help their shows sort of be special in the meantime, give Mark a break once in a while. Yeah. Like I was singing a third of the set. Yeah. Right. As opposed to the first night with except I sang the whole 90 minutes. Um, ironically, the day that I left Armored Saint, the Friday in Huntington, New York and Long Island, uh, that that the Saturday, the next day, uh, last Saturday, basically, uh, was Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, Penn's Peak, the same venue that I started with except in. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So it was almost like, you know, it was, it was just one following the other it was very similar venue wise. Right. But, but I feel like, um, yes, I was comfortable with the armored saint guys because those names are household names around here. And, uh, the, the, you know, there was, except I was walking into, a room full of people that I had just met. Right. And so yeah, that's, you, that's okay. And they accept treated me like a bro the whole time. Like whatever I needed, they helped me. I, whatever they were all hugs and kisses the whole time. Yeah. It's like armored saint, but armored saint I've known forever. And yeah, you got close to, Oh, we're not, you know, we don't have dinner together, but uh, we did, we did last week. <laughs> Yeah. Have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're, um, we, were pen, we were pen pals or on the phone or they'd come see the toys play or what, you know, and I'd always, I've been seeing those guys for 40 years. Yeah. I know you've got a lot of history uh, yeah. with them. Um, I got a couple other things I wanted to hit real quick. Right. Um, tell me, uh, Frank Bello from Anthrax showed up to one of your yes. gigs. Uh, that was pretty cool. That um, was the, the Montclair, that was, uh, the Wellmont Theater in Montclair, New Jersey. Um, I also had a quick meetup at a Cuban restaurant with the guys in Cassius King. And we just put out a new record. So it was kind of like, and here's the interesting, interesting thing, kind of sidebar is I make records with people that I've never met before. Yeah. <laughs> with the Cassius King, I have two records and I've never met the bass player. And I just met the drummer for the first time last week. And I've met Dan, the guitar player, the main songwriter, like three times in my whole life. And that yeah. was one of them. So they came to the show. They loved the show. Um, and yes, Frank Bello from Anthrax showed up and uh, he was 
it was great to see him in person and hang out with him. He, he hung out. He, he came to the armor Saint dressing room and stayed all night. Yeah. I held court, held court all night. Uh, him and Joey, right. Him and Bush yeah. are close because of anthrax and him and Joey are close because they're bass players. And it was just their, them and their friends like Joey and a few friends came up and just took over the dressing room. And me and Jeff were just like, there hanging out going, wow. We, uh, there, was, you know, there was a really great photo making the rounds on social media of Bush and Bello watching you on stage with Armored Saint. And if you look just, closely at the, at John's face, yeah, he's kind of going like, and he's what pointing up and, with this? Yeah, he's, He's Picture. pointing up like he's pointing I'm supposed up. to be up there. What am I doing? He's here? like, what? It's like, what? <laughs> like, you know, what? another thing that uh, that dawned on me while all this was going on, especially when Bello showed up, uh, we've had uh, Frank Bello on the podcast twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, oddly enough, John Bush was our featured guest the, 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 the week that you were fronting Armored Saint. It was just purely coincidental that his episode uh, went public and aired that the, same week. Yeah, the day I'm getting on the plane to go relieve him. Yeah, he's our featured he's, guest on the Talk right. Louder podcast. And then I realized when there was, a, there was a group shot backstage of you with Armored Saint and Frank Bello, and I realized we've had everybody in that photo on the podcast, except for Joey Vera. We've had every member of Armored Saint on the Talk Louder podcast, except Joey Vera. And like a, and like a pest, I immediately said that to Joey. At some, well, at some point I go, you know, uh, you're the only one in Armored Saint hadn't been on my silly podcast. And he goes, well, we can fix that. Yes, we should do that. We should yeah. get him on the show uh, sometime real soon. Yeah, I think that they only have three more shows. No, that's wrong. They have like, 10 or 12 more shows to go. That's a big tour. Yeah, that is. The Wasp tour is big. Yeah. Um, I wanted to also, since we're on the subject of photos, I wanted to give a shout to Shannon Wilk. Uh, She she provided some really amazing photos. That that black and white one of you on stage with the Armored Saint logo behind you is just, I mean, that's a poster, man. Yeah, that's that's one of them. Her father is a fantastic uh, photographer as well. Uh, Jody. Jody Wilk. Yeah, and okay. I've met both of them. They're, they're great. And they're fans. They're real fans and they take great photos. They're both musicians. Um, I'm not quite sure where they live. Maybe Pennsylvania or their East coast. Yeah. But they're all over. They, they go to all the shows, you know, once you hit, get past Nashville, you might see them in the pit taking photos in the first three songs at every show. So there's stuff's out there. Uh, Hey, so uh, Shannon has a, has a podcast and I've been on her podcast before. It's cool. You can answer this question. Okay. You, you, you just brought up something that I've always wanted clarified from a professional. Why is it, why is the standard rule? You only get to shoot the first three songs of a band's performance. I, I think someone told me recently uh, that kiss came up with that. And mm-hmm. made it like a staple rule. Now, I don't know how true that is. I'm not blaming anybody. Um, I think that it's it can be annoying for the audience to have these just this crew of people sticking a camera up and all this action down in front of you while you're trying to enjoy your favorite band or something. Yeah. There's all these different sort of not arguments, but points to be made. But I feel like the reason if Kiss did come up with it, it would be because they come out, their makeup looks perfect. Right. By the fourth song, they're starting to sweat. Yeah. They're starting, their hair starting to fall down. They're looking a little, they, you start to get winded at a certain point. They're working. So, so the photos look great when you come right off the rack, you know? Yeah. Uh, as far as like how the fresh the band looks. So right. a lot of bands can do all their work posing for photos and the first three songs and then just relax the rest of the show. Yeah. Now, keyword posing. That's just an arbitrary word or is it depending well, on what you need a photo for? Yeah. If Rolling Stone magazine is there and they're shooting some, a story those first three songs are kind of important to you just as much as it is to them. So it's, it's, it's energy well spent. I feel like now, now to like obliterate that and just say, Oh, that's, that's dumb. And just be a punter and just say, that's dumb. I I hate that. You know, I get that too. 
uh, because some of the coolest photos I've seen of Gene Simmons are where he's fucked up. Yeah. His dude. makeup is gone. There's blood all over him and he looks like he's fucking been to hell and back. And those are my favorite shots of anybody. Right. Kiss. Yeah. That's um, where why the makeup's that's... half wiped off or whatever. And you, they're just sweaty as shit. And they back in the seventies when they're wearing real leather and you see photos like that more from back then than you do now. Yeah. Because of the three song rule. Yeah. It became yeah. an industry standard at some point. I've often just wondered, I bet our buddy David Castillo could answer that question. I've always wondered if it's just the, the, the artist uh, wants to look their best. And as you say, they look their best the first three songs before they start sweating and the makeup right. starts running and the hair starts wilting and all that. Right. Um, well, or I think, I think a, that there's a little bit of a photo war happening and to get that over and done with Three songs yeah. feels pretty good. And it's distracting, I, I would imagine, for the, well, for for the, the band, for the band, as right. well as the front row. Right. Yeah. And uh, but but like you, I've often thought that the coolest photos are the ones where the, they're all sweaty and you can just tell that, you know, they've just put on a hell of a performance and they're and they're beat ragged. And that's that's a rock and roll photo right there. Well, I also feel like when you're warmed up and you're in your prime and you're not actually spent yet and you look spent. Yeah, can be the coolest thing because your energy, your st your energy is still on fire, but your persona, your your makeup's fucked up, and you got blood all over you. That's the shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the energy. Anyway, good good question. We're talking today about you uh, standing in for Armored Saint, and prior to that, uh, uh, except uh, you've also done some shows with Dirty Looks. Um, you mentioned to me that you were also recently asked to fill in for Moxie. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Their, offer? Guitar, their guitar player, I'm going to mess up his name if I try to recall it right now. I apologize profusely. Um, got my number from somewhere, got my email address. I believe it was my email address and from somewhere and hit me up to do that recent festival down there with stars and uh, Peter Ford, right. legs diamond. Right. Yeah. And, um, I was like, wait, what, you know, the same reaction. I was like, what, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, he didn't go into detail about what, why he was courting me to do as to do a, be a sub. Mm hmm. But uh, I, it eluded and came out later that there was something going on with their singer. And if it's the same guy, the guy is killer. He was in that band Toxic or still is in that Canadian metal band Toxic. He's badass. Okay. And of course, I'm going to fuck up his name, too, if I try to remember it, too. So anyway, my point is it was like a, a safety net kind of a thing. And I kept in touch with the guy and I kept suggesting well, what about this guy what about there's a guy because I suggested Jason Kane who would have been perfect he mm. has the perfect voice for to do buzz the old moxie stuff it's yes. perfect and he loves that shit yeah. and I kept telling him you gotta look up Jason Kane he's in San Antonio if this were to ever happen again uh, thank you for thinking of me think of me again sure but you should you should just check out some stuff jason kane yeah. um i also uh was glad beyond happy to hear that when he got back to me and said uh our singer figured out what the issue was whether it was a medical or family or whatever he's gonna make the show and this would have been maybe two weeks prior and he was in touch with me maybe a month prior. So, right. It was just well, one of those things, you know, Hey, my phone rings. I, you know, I don't like to talk about all of the offers to sub or even audition for it. Don't like to talk about all of them, but there's been quite a few and it's flattering. It's yeah. flattering. Um, but in the so moment, who's your bucket list, who's your bucket list band? You've, <laughs> if the phone was going to ring next week, who would you want it to be? Well, I mean, I think I, I it would it would be the obvious. It would be ACDC. It would yeah. be Cheap Trick. It would be Aerosmith. It would be you know. I mean, come on. It would be Judas Priest. It would be, <laughs> but you can't. Th that's that's like a dream. That's not even. That's yeah. un, That's not even like in written in that. It's not written in the books. That's well, not, none you know, of that's going to happen because if you take those guys out, you don't have those bands. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, Halford was, do we want to use the word replaced or do we want to say had a sub for a while? <laughs> I feel like he was replaced. Yeah. But then he came back. So it makes me backpedal on what, how that feels to my head, you know, as, as a priest fan, because yeah. Tim Owens is great. Fantastic. Singer. One of the greatest singers I've ever heard. Yeah. And is is just as deserving as anyone to sing for his favorite band as anyone else would be to sing for their favorite band if they could if they had the the uh the 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 the, the, the talent to do it. Yeah. Um no, I, I just had to ask. Silly question. Yeah, just had to no, ask. I, I think it's a ridiculous I mean, hey, question, you, but it's, we, it's we would have never imagined uh, two months ago that you would have done dates with Accept and Armored Saints. So. Of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, ACDC did the right thing by getting Axel. Like I, I did a great the, job. The, the, the cool things that I heard were whether they're cool to anybody else or not was as soon as it was announced that they were auditioning, and Axel heard, this is me just fly on the wall. I just heard this through some industry people that, uh, cause I threw my name in the hat immediately. I I got a call from someone who's in, in management, not their management, but knows someone who knows someone in their management, kind of that, that thing right. and sent some stuff and they got it to ACDC. And I never, you know, I never heard you know, I never heard any, I never got, of course, I never got anything back, but I didn't expect anything back. The yeah. point I heard that Axel said, you know, some of his people in his office were like, Hey man, did you hear Brian Johnson? But he's like, what? Yeah. Can you tell those guys that, cause a lot of ACDC's camp, their crew and management stuff, they know Axel's people True, of yeah. course they know right yeah so act was like hey can you tell so and so that i'll just do it if they need me i'll just fucking do it yeah and it was a no-brainer for angus and them to just go well of course that's yeah. perfect he'll sell tickets mm -hmm. people will love it or they'll hate it or they'll be blown away or they won't be blown away or they'll re have regrets because they missed it or they made history by doing that yeah. so and they really, didn't have to cancel the dates a really it's a really big deal uh because because axel is such a star I, I, that sounds kind of smarmy or something and i it's apologize true. if yeah. that's dude it's it's like an axel rose so and <laughs> yeah. he and he can it's a no fucking brainer. You and me here, if no one's listening, it doesn't matter. Check it out. You know, and I know that when you think about Axel's timber and tone, he can do Brian Johnson and Bon Scott all fucking day long. Yeah. And he did a great job. He did well, an amazing job. He is, he is sung with Queen. He's sung with Elton John. He's yeah. sung, sung with Don, he, Don Henley. He's, he's sung with ACDC. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's completely ridiculous. His his bag of tricks is full. Yeah, yeah. The feathers in his cap. He doesn't have any room for any more feathers. <laughs> Those feathers take took over the hat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So well, you're starting to get a few feathers in your hat as well. And again, I think the Armored Saint run was uh, was well received. I know. Uh, you were there and thrilled to be there, but I know at the same time you wanted your buddy, John Bush to get better and get back on. The I wanted right both of those great. guys to go back to Mark, uh, Mark Tornillo. I wanted both him and John Bush to, I don't want any singer to get sick. I don't right. want Brian Johnson to have a health issue and have yeah. someone come in and, and, you know, make history with the band, but at the same time, frustrating. Yeah. Completely yeah. wrong and frustrating but we have to think about health. We have to think about uh, our own mortality. We have to stay as healthy as we can. Um, our idols are dying. And I'm not trying to go doom and gloom here, but you know what? It's like the bad motherfuckers, they're yeah. old now. So yeah. you can't, you know, yeah. people are living longer because they're eating healthier and stuff like that. So you can't really complain about, uh, your favorite band having a new guy because, yeah. because yeah. something happened. <laughs> it has to happen sometimes. Right. It has to happen sometimes. And I think again, uh, just like with except, I think the, 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 
the dates you did with Armor Saint were very well received. I think you, you did a great job. Saint agrees that you did a great job. They thanked you on social media. So um, congratulations again. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll do another one of these episodes in a couple of weeks where we sub out the name Armored Saint <laughs> well, and throw in, in some in, other in band. All, <laughs> in all joking aside, you're funny, Dave, but in all joking aside, I, I really hope not. Because yeah. like I've said, I don't, I think that uh, the COVID bug and all of this uh, RSV, the upper respiratory stuff and the way that it is affecting people of all ages, yeah, um, is you can't sing with it. You're going to destroy your voice and, um, you know, yeah. we'll need to stay cool and take care of it. And, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, Bush works hard. Bush works hard on the state. So does Mark. Mark pushes hard. Those guys yeah. are singing hard. Yeah. I don't sing like they do. I sing a lot lighter than they do. So, and they sing consecutive nights for oh, weeks at a time. They're doing like seven in a row and eight in a row and they're 60 yeah. or yeah. older. Mark's, yeah. much, Mark's yeah. much older, but yeah. yeah, same, whatever, same thing. So well, crazy. congratulations, yeah. man. I thought it was, uh, it was awesome once again to watch you from afar, uh, do your thing and, uh, and, and succeed at it. You know, when it's all said and done, no one can say this was a train wreck. So like you were saying earlier in the show, take it and run. Right. Yeah. I had a really good time, uh, you know, to help out my friends, to help out a band that I literally was listening to in high school. Uh, yeah was a, on one side a dream come true but again under the circumstances i, I was really hoping they were oh, oh just kidding you know jason you can hang out for a couple of days but i'm gonna sing tonight i was really hoping that that was gonna gonna happen with armored saint like it did with accept but right john was being extremely careful and how can you blame him yeah uh, but he's yeah, back. He in, does. He's back in full force now, and they're killing it. And a bunch of more shows are sold out. They're fucking amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, well, you played a part in keeping that on track. So, uh, congratulations! Thank and uh, again, great story. Thanks for sharing it with us today on the Talk Louder podcast. Uh, Jason McMaster, my co-host, and now the former singer for Armored Saint. Oh shit! You're dead. <laughs>